Hello everyone. How to quickly stop and restart the playing clips in your Ableton Live set via Max for Life. This is the topic of this tutorial and let me quickly explain why I developed this device. So maybe um, if you're playing in session view and you're playing live, you have a few clips and that's the beauty about Ableton Live that you're actually able to play stuff on the fly and that you are able to change stuff quickly in tracks. One missing feature here is if you say, well, actually I want maybe one thing, I, you want to do something live or you want to stop something, but then you want to come back to all the clips you currently played. So say you want to stop this, play, do something live and then come back in on the next one with all the clips you played. So you can't do this natively. So you can only stop all clips here or you can hit the transport via spacebar or via the uh, button here and then you stop everything. So this device, um, or I got actually three devices here because there is one ad more advanced technique, but if let's start with the first one, which is quite easy to set up. So let's set this up from the beginning. So first you will need a MIDI track and let's put that at the beginning because this device is sitting on a MIDI track because for uh, changing stuff, it's um, for remoting it and controlling it, it makes sense. So the stop and restart playing clips, obviously this is for session only and it will only interact with stuff you got in session view. So if you are playing clips in session view here. So now if we just um, play a few things here. Ah, by the way, this pack is from the, it's a demo song from the Forge by Hack. It's an Ableton Live pack you can get on the Ableton homepage. So if you like the sounds or the music here, check it out. Okay, so now those clips are playing I hit stop and they are changing on the next one because my global launch quantization is set to the next one and I can hit play again and they start on the next one again. Okay, that's easy how that is how easy that is. So I set up a few things here because you can always use the native MIDI map here for mapping those buttons. But um, for me, the native MIDI map is a bit limited. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a direct MIDI in remote control technique. So for example, I'm using a controller, a MIDI controller, which is sending MIDI notes here. So I select the NanoPad 2, which is my controller here. I set the monitor to in. So now the notes, and we can see that the notes are being received on this track. And I can now quickly map those buttons here to the incoming MIDI note pitch I want to trigger. So if I just hit the pad down below here, it's detecting it. So I need to switch that on and then I hit S for sync and it's waiting for the next MIDI note I put in. I forgot which one I took. Okay, I took the right one. So now those two buttons here are MIDI mapped and I can store this now as a preset, recall this whole track in a different Ableton Live set and it's all set up already because, um, and that's one advantage here because global MIDI map, you can't save this across Ableton Live sets. If you're interested about techniques about that, um, I have a global MIDI map thingy happening and an advanced MIDI control Max for Live device. By the way, those are Max for Life devices. You will need Ableton Live Suite to make use of those. And um, Suite is included. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add on towards Ableton Live Standard. Okay, cool. So now I can have those things playing. So if I want to change something and stop and maybe do something live and come back to the clips which were playing. I can do that now already. So obviously, and that's one step even further. If you're excited about the device already, have a look in the video description here. You will find the links to this device here. But I want to show you one more, like <laughs> going one, one more step deeper. So because, and this is obvious, quite obvious already, you don't usually want to stop all clips. You want to 
only stop maybe clips on the first three tracks here. So let's quickly set this up. And this is done via um, a different device, which is included in the full pack here. So we have the stop and restart playing clips. That's a global one. That's the one we just I just showed you. So if I take one uh, stop and restart playing clips on individual tracks sender. So I have a device here, which I can set up the same way. We're via the MIDI note input here. I quickly do this, press S. So setting this up, those buttons here, because the MIDI mapping is still set or the MIDI routing here is still set from the Nano in and my monitor is set to in as well. So, but now I can define which tracks should be affected via the stop and restart. So I need to pick the receiver device and drag those or this on the tracks I want to be affected. Okay, so I just take maybe the first three tracks and I drag and drop this onto the first three tracks here. So let's have a listen now and we can see if we play some stuff and maybe add some more stuff here. So now I can hit my stop button and it's the stop is only applied to the first three tracks here. And we start playing. Okay, so you could have two buttons in your Ableton Live set and your Ableton Live performance. It's probably made for performance here. <coughs> it will be used only for performance. And have those things happening automatically. And you don't need to follow a structure here. You can just play your Ableton Live set like you're used to in Session View and set this up this way. There is one more thing I want to show you because you can have multiple of those stop and restart on individual track devices <coughs> and you can bind them to different tracks. So you got um, this here where it says send to and you have a clip trick pipe. I call that you got 10 different pipes so you can send this and receive that on 10 different pipes. What does that mean? So um, if we set this up quickly just for showing purposes. So let's say I want the first device here to send on trigger pipe one and I want the second one to send on trigger pipe two. And I now define the first one, the first track, the device which is sitting on the first track here to receive from the pipe one and the second one to receive from the pipe two. Okay, so I quickly go on and stop all tracks and let's delete the third one. So we have this really obvious here. Delete. There we go. Okay, so now um, what's happening? So if we have a clip playing on the first one and a clip playing on the second track. So the first one is set to listen to clip trigger pipe one and the second one, the second device on here is listening to trigger pipe two. So if I hit stop now, only the first one will stop. If I hit stop on the second one, it's sending on click trigger pipe two. Only the second one will listen. So that means you are able to set up groups of tracks here. <laughs> Not a very nice sound example here, but I hope you get the idea. So you could set up groups of um, tracks to listen two multiple devices. So maybe if you have like um, set this up for all your baseline sounds and bass clips, maybe have one for the main kick and snare and maybe have one for um, percussion stuff, you know. So this way you can set up um, some advanced stop and replay clips here if you are experimenting anyways in um, session view and set those things up here. This could be a, a re, maybe not a game game changer, but still, you know, you aren't able to stop certain groups of clips. Yes, you can set those clips as groups, but then you already have a new track 
and you think in, in group tracks here. So this way you're quite flexible on setting this up. And I hope um, this is for you. If it is for you, um, have a look on the links provided in the video description here. And um, I see you in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye.